Hello everybody, this is JD. I'm doing a video today and it's about taxation in this country. People say when you get a bag of lemons, make lemonade. Well, that's a good idea because I don't like lemon meringue pie. But the truth is, to make lemonade from lemons, you have to change things, add things. Well, it's, yeah, we gotta add water, you gotta add sugar, etc. to taste. But if you just squeeze the lemons in the water, you have lemon water, and that's not lemonade. And I don't like it anyway. <clears throat> but this is not about a recipe on how to make lemonade. It's about our taxation within the United States. The United States tax system, tariff system, and federal regulations is the greatest inhibitor towards our economic growth within this country. First, the people cannot afford the burden upon them placed by the federal government, the flamboyant federal government. Manufacturing with all their rules, regulations, and taxes upon taxes upon taxes and tariffs and everything else makes manufacturing a major non-performer. To open up a business of manufacturing within the United States, to hire full-time people, there's so many regulations and everything that must be adhered to that sometimes it's just not worth it. So jobs are lost. Manufacturing in this country is lost. The opportunity for creating new wealth is lost. And then we get to you, the everyday middle class person who gets this nice paycheck and you look at it and it's, ooh, you earned this much. And between all the taxes and everything that you pay, you get only this much. And you're wondering how you're going to meet all your bills and feed your family. Taxation, which in, in this company, country, has become a full burden upon the people. It's no good the way it is. The rich, they can afford it. But they have to get beyond a point to where they can afford it. Then the tax goes in this country has no effect on them. Matter of fact, to avoid most of the tax codes, they'll go elsewhere to do things. And then just bring them here and not pay the taxes. So, what are we going to do? We can't throw a system out and say, forget it, we ain't going to pay taxes. But we can't keep the system either. The system is inadequate, an antique system, and it's totally not fulfilling the functions and needs of the people and this flamboyant government that has gone spending berserk is the best way to put it. So there's things we have to look at. How to correct these problems. I'm not going to tell you I got all the answers because I don't have any of the answers right now. We together will find the answers and we together will fix it. Yeah, I like the idea of a sales tax straight across the board eliminating all other taxes. Federal government gives a sales tax straight across the board on everything and then once every three or four months sends you a check for maybe $1,200 to $1,600 for stuff that you pay taxes on, that you shouldn't pay taxes on. I like that idea. That's just an idea though. Is that going to fix the system? Maybe, maybe not. But you see, that's just one. I also believe in maybe we should eliminate some of these taxes that we have to allow industry to grow. Increase our tariffs on inputs to this country that go for finished products, but yet decrease our tariffs on raw materials for manufacturing in this country. I think releasing some of the regulations so that a com company can 
build, improve, and move our nation beyond where we are. We have so much that is inhibiting, that is on the burden of each and every American citizen caused by the federal government, day in and day out. They are so afraid of insulting a special interest group that the majority of us have to suffer. Let me give you an example of what I mean. And this isn't really taxes, but it's how special interest groups control everything and the everyday people are uh, left out in the cold. They had a demonstration over here in Norfolk. They have a a monument to the Confederate soldiers of the Civil War. On it is a Confederate flag and a few other things. Now this special group, which they call themselves Justice Subdued, wants it tore down, destroyed, gone. Because it offends them. Well, I remember when I first got here, 71, and I was looking in downtown, no, I came upon that monument. And I looked at it and I said, why is that here? Then I started thinking about it. Well, wait a minute. I'm in Norfolk, Virginia. This is part of the heritage of right here. This is part of history. This is part of what went on in this era. Whether it was good or bad, it doesn't matter. It is the heritage. But the special interest group, they don't care. There's a Confederate flag that meets slave. But to me, when I was taught in school, the Civil War was about state rights over federal government regulations. And states lost. <laughs> so, not had really very much about slavery, but slavery became the issue because that's the only way the North could get people to join the military. It was fight against slavery, against slavery, against slavery. Not fight against the individual right of the state to select how it shall govern itself. Because you see, I'm trying to raise an army to go into the South saying, we need soldiers to enslave each state by the federal government having more control over what goes on within the state. I don't think that would have worked. So they changed it to slavery. It's all about slavery. It's about slavery. Most of the states had already had laws that were going to abolish slavery before the Civil War would have ended. But that got all screwed up anyway, by the, via the Civil War. But our government is overregulated, overspending, extremely flamboyant, and all that tax money that they need to be everything that they are is on the burden of you, the American people. That has to change. The American people cannot afford this flamboyant government. No way. And the proof to the pudding, or the proof is, how much are they borrowing every year? If the American people could afford it, they would pay completely for it and there'd be no borrowing. And the debt gets larger and larger. Until it comes to a point where there's no more borrowing will be available and then the taxes will go up and up and up unless we do something about it now. Now I said we, I never said I, I never said me. It's always been we. I did tell you an idea I like, I like the sales tax. Some people call it the something other tax or this tax or that tax. It's just simply a sales tax. I like that idea. Everybody pays the same percentage no matter what it is. And it's fair and equitably distributed. For example, me, I go out and buy a $30,000, $29,000, $30,000 car. That's what I can afford. I pay the sales tax on $29,000, $30,000. But somebody who has a multi-million dollar income, they're not going to buy a third. They're not even going to be seen near a $30,000. They're going to buy one of those 150, 250, maybe even a million dollar car. Well, they paid a sales tax on a million dollars. Plain and simple. If they try to go outside the country to buy it to avoid that sales tax, as soon as that car comes into the country, they got to pay that sales tax. There is no ands, ifs, buts. 
So you can't go to some place, let's say like Australia, buy your nice big expensive multi-million dollar sailboat, pay 3% sales tax, fly it, sail it up here, and think, whoa, I... No, because as soon as that touches the dock inside the United States or in the harbor or within our waters, you now owe that percentage of whatever that boat is, its sales tax. So your boat stays in Australia. If it comes here, you pay the sales tax. That's just one of many ideas that possibly could fix it. Some people say a flat tax across the board where everybody pays like 18% of their salary and that's it. No ands, if buts possibility but then where's that gonna stop then other people say a progressive tax more towards leading towards the rich and not so much some people say tax uh, anything over a million dollars anything under a million dollars at this rate etc so then we're back in the same ballpark where it started with and then you got all these tariffs that who gets tariff and who don't get tariff if you don't get a tariff that brings comes, you know, brings more in for retail, but less for creating new wealth or manufacturing. Remember, the more you bring in overseas from retail, the less you manufacture. The less you manufacture, the less you create new wealth. Thus, your economy no dies. So, what is this really about? It's about you. How much longer can you afford the burden? of this current tax system that our federal government has. They do band-aid fixes here and there to appease the people and have them shut up for a while, but that doesn't fix the problem. The problem needs to be fully addressed and fixed. I threw up a couple of ideas, but I'm not the only one. So people, I made you three promises. One, to bring your word to Washington, D.C. Tell me what you think of this, how you feel about this. Send me emails, you know, kmjdc at aol.com. That's all you got to do is just send me some emails. Tell me what you think. Go to my Constitutionist Party. It's not a real political party. It's just a bunch of people who believe in the Constitution as it is written, not the way we'd like it to be written. I mean, I don't like the income tax amendment. Does that mean if I become president, we can stop? No, we can't. We have to change the tax code. I don't like the tax code, period. Maybe we shouldn't pay no taxes at all. Well, that would be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> Watch the federal government really knows dive. But people, you got to tell me what's in you so I can get it in me so I can bring it to Washington, D.C. Then second promise, that Congress will serve you, the people, and no others. No special interest groups. No organizations outside the United States. <coughs> and no... I don't know what to say. No private enterprises. Let's just put that in there. And especially nothing like the UN or the NWO. So people... And then I got a third promise to bring leadership. That's the one that's going to get me shot, but that's beside the point. It won't be the first time I face the bullet for this country, and it probably won't be the last. You know, if I die, it will be. <laughs> but people, I want you to understand. Yes, our tax system is broken. Our tax code, our collection of income for this nation cannot uh, afford to pay for the flamboyant government we have. The government is too flamboyant, too much extra, too much baggage. You know, you can have a cake with just frosting on it, and it'd be nice and good. You take that same cake, put frosting on it, put a lot of flowers on it, put a lot of other decorations on it, costs a lot more, but it still tastes the same. The things that should matter to our government is one you above all else. So that means, what's the Constitution say? Okay, Constitution says you got to provide for the common defense. So our military should come first and foremost because that's what the federal government's there for. Second is a guarantee between you because they made an agreement to you. They put you into an, an contract, 
actual contract in which they collect money and in return when you reach a certain age you get a certain amount for supplementing your retirement called Social Security that must be maintained Medicare you pay for that that must be maintained those are insurances that you actually pay for that is contracts that you entered into the government whether you did it freely or not but it's still contracts because they collect the money once they take that one dollar they are indebted to you to fulfill that contract until you die basically they can't get out of that so there we've got common defense social security medicare I'm not going to say Medicaid because Medicaid is a free program that you pay. You Everybody pays into it so that people who can't afford to have medical has medical. Education. Well, education actually comes under common defense. Because our military says you've got to be 18 years old. You have to have a high school diploma or equivalent to join the military. You don't have any of those requirements. You can't join. The military can't provide for the common defense. So education becomes part of common defense because unless you have that education, a uh, high school diploma or equivalent, the military cannot function. And if the military cannot function, then providing for the common defense cannot be. Therefore, the Constitution does not do what it is said it must do. So now we got everything down to where military, education together, social security. Well, what about other things? Chico, no. Well, there are other things. And they need to be taken care of and adhered to also. But we need to look at our constitution, see what a constitution says, and decide what is the right government for the United States. Not this flamboyant thing we got in Washington DC called Congress, where they got the Republicans arguing among the Democrats. There's a lot of wasted expense right there. Republicans, they're political parties. They are costing us more money every year, which we the people cannot afford. So, do I have the answers? No. Can we fix it? Ah, what did I say in my promises to you? Three promises, and then after that, I said everything else we together can fix. Yes, we can fix it. We can fix it. Not I. Us together. How? We're going to have to figure that out because we don't have an option. We don't have a choice. We will do it because it needs to be done. So... Did I give you anything on taxes that you didn't already know? Not really. You already know you, you pay too much in taxes. You already know you can't afford it. You already know the government's flamboyant and it's wasteful. These things you already know. Did I give you any solutions? Well, I throw in a few suggestions, but there are actually no sol solutions. They're suggestions, which I hope I get from you also. And maybe out of all this together, when I become president, we'll have something we can build on that Congress can work it for. Because once Congress starts working for you, that's going to be one of their problems they have to deal with. To relieve you of this enormous tax burden that's upon your shoulders because of their flamboyant actions. That's the best way to say it. So that's what I have to say about taxes, people. Together, we can fix it. I can't do it alone. I won't even try to. But we must do it together. And it must be done. Because the American people, you, your neighbor, your other neighbors, the guy across the street, the guy who lives 10 miles away, the guy who lives on the other side of the country, cannot afford it any longer. The industry, manufacturing, all rules, regulations, taxation, is driving them out of the country. When they go out of the country, you all lose jobs. We can't afford that any longer. We can't afford the degradation of the standards set forth in this country by you, the people. Not the federal government. You, the people. 
So, what I want to say is, that's my spiel on taxation. I don't agree with what we got in current. I think it's totally antiquated. I think it's outdated, which is the same as antiquated. I think it's non-functional. It doesn't serve the needs of the nation or the people. It's a burden upon the people that this flamboyant government freely spends. So, do you want me to go on and on? Nah, don't need to, do I? So, what am I all about? Three promises and then we got a lot of stuff to work on. A lot of stuff to fix. You all have a nice day. Oh, by the way, that group that wants the uh, monument toy down, you know what they reminded me of? I was watching on the news. They reminded me of ISIL. See, ISIL, they're Muslims. They don't believe in the gods of the olden age. They don't believe in the relics of the olden age. They're going through Iraq destroying all these monuments, all these statues, all these cities because they don't believe in it. They don't like it. They don't care that other people might want to see it. They don't care that other people might have feelings towards it. Oh, no. It's what I want that's going to be. That's ISO. That's what this group is. The small group of people trying to get this. This is That statue is a heritage. Whether it's a good heritage or bad, it's still heritage of our nation. It shows a portion of our history. And out of it, you can get the feelings you wish. Good, bad, or indifferent. doesn't matter. But it's heritage. You can't destroy the heritage of a nation without destroying the actual nation. And then you repeat all the mistakes over again. Think of that. So you all have a nice day. Are we allowing mini ISILs to exist in this country to appease special interest groups? Think about that. And then taxation, which this video is supposed to be about. I want you to think about that. And I want you to check me out. You got to check me out. You guys got to get me out of this computer into the real world. Ask me to come and speak. I'll be glad to speak anywhere in this country at all. Just get me there and get me home. You don't have to pay for me to speak. Just get me there and get me home. That's all I ask. Thank you. You have a nice day. This is JD.